final leg. So we are here to talk about the Doha Diamond League. Just going to do a quick recap talking about the events both on the sprints and in the field events as well. Um, just going to talk through them. Uh, definitely want to hear your thoughts and your opinions on everything that went down at the Doha Diamond League. But let's dive into just a couple of these events. So first off, of course, that men's 200 meters. Now, this was billed as a huge matchup between Andre de Grasse, Olympic champion, Noah Lyles, world champion, and then Fred Curley, Olympic silver medalist in the 100 meters, and has been dominating the past um, you know couple months with, the, with all the events, one, two, four. Now, Andre de Grasse, we know what his season is like. We know what he does during the seasons. He doesn't really run very fast early in the season, but he shows up when he gets to the championships or to the Olympics. So him coming out here, I didn't have really high any high expectations. And he didn't, you know, produce what we, you know, what some might have thought. He only ran 20.15. He got uh, fourth place. Nothing too spectacular. He's going to be ready when it comes to the, uh, to the world championships later this summer. Now, Lyles and Fred Curley, this was a big race. Both of them have actually only raced on two occasions twice at the world um at the usa olympic trials last year in the 200s in the rounds and then of course in the finals so this is the first time that they'd be racing in a diamond league race and noah lyles got the best of fred curley people have been kind of looking down on lyles arian knight is really stepping up ran that 19.49 noah lyles had an kind of up and down 2021 got bronze at the olympics he ran 19.52 but that was after so people were kind of up and down on lyles i think this bodes very well for him his season best was already 19.86, which he ran a couple weeks ago in Florida. To improve that, well, the wind was plus 2.1, so just over the allowable, but running 19.72, beating out Fred Curley, this is a really great performance for No Lyles and shows that he's not he's not here to play. He's really ready to defend his world championship title. And guess what? He doesn't have to worry about the uh, um, the USA trials. He has that ticket, that wild card to world championships, so he's setting things up for the world championships doesn't have to peak until um until july so lyles is good fred curley i think this also bodes well very very um very very nicely for him he's getting very consistent in that 197 198 range we saw what he was able to do last year um in the second half of the season after the olympics and then of course what he's been able to do this year already ran 19.80 beating out michael norman at the mount sack meet so fred curley showing that he has the consistency there he is one of my favorites to get medals, either in the, I think he might get a medal in both the 100 and the 200 meters. Both of the events are super, super stacked, but Fred Curley is showing that he can remain consistent no matter what the race is, and he's always going to be there. So keep a lookout for him. Dream Richards got third place. I think he's also going to be one to look out for. He might be a little wild card in there. Remember, he got the bronze medal in the 200 all the way back in 2017. He has, um, you know, of course, that personal best of 19.97. Got the world indoor gold in the 400. So uh, Richard's definitely making some imp some improvements. Keep a lookout for him. And then, of course, the rest of the field, Andre de Grasse is going to be a metal threat uh, metal threat as the year goes on. So that's the 200 meters. That was a, what everyone was build, um, really looking out for. Let's jump over to the women's 200 meters now. And this was another really, really high quality field. We were looking at Gabby Thomas, Sharika Jackson, um, Dina Asher-Smith, um, Tamara Clark, right? Desiree Bryant, a couple other athletes in there. Gabby Thomas, if you didn't realize that she was the real deal, she is the real deal at this point. She beat Sharika Jackson, who in my opinion is one of the most dangerous 200 meter runners that we have right now, outside of Elaine Thompson, outside of everyone else. Dina Asher-Smith, the um, reigning world champion uh, from 2019. She actually, this is her first 200 meters of the entire year. And she's actually prepping. She already has a wild card to world championships, but she's actually prepping for the world championships, for Commonwealth Games and um, European championships. So she's prepping for a very long season with a lot of championships. She ran very well here to get that. Uh, she got third place in 22.37. Sharika Jackson got second in 22.07, but Gabby... Thomas beating them all running 21.98. Now, I know meet record, people saying, okay, equaled Allison Felix's meet record. Amazing, but thinking about the people that she beat, Sharika Jackson, Dina Asher Smith, these are high quality people. Outside of that, we just saw Mboma get injured a couple, um, well, last week, right, finishing, uh, not finishing behind Shelly and Fraser Price in that 100. The only person Gabby Thomas is really going to be contending with at this point if Umboma doesn't come back, is Elaine Thompson. So Gabby Thomas, the real deal, she's showing that that 21.61 and that bronze medal she got at the Olympics, those were no flukes. 
One thing that I really did kind of, kind of find frustrating last year was people were saying, oh, Gabby Thomas is new to the circuit and, oh, she's just getting her experience for the first time. Go back to 2018 and 2019. 2018, when she was in the NCAA, after that year, she went to Europe. She won the Lausanne Diamond League. She finished second place in the London Diamond League. 2019, she won the Lausanne Diamond League again. Gabby Thomas is not new to this, right? She is true to this. She is the truth. Gabby Thomas, I think she is, we got to see what Elaine Thomas is going to do, but she's definitely going to be, I think, top two uh, when we get to uh, the World Championships later on this year. So keep a lookout for her. Also, Sharika Jackson, I think she's probably one of the best 200 meter runners. Of course, she didn't do well in the rounds, right? She ran kind of slow and unfortunately got eliminated, but she might be one of the best 200 meter runners in the world right now. Also look out for her. And of course, Dina Astra Smith. I really want to keep some eyes on Tamara Clark. Now, she didn't run amazing here, right? She ran 22.72, got fourth place, but she's now training with Gabby Thomas. She has a PB of 21.98, which she got fourth at the Olympic trials last year. I think she is very, very dangerous, and there's so many names, right? Gabby Thomas, Jenna Prandini, of course, Abby Steiner, um, but I think Tamara Clark, she's going to be potentially one of my picks to make the 200-meter team for the United States, so keep a lookout for Tamara Clark. Let's see what she does. Um, as the year progresses. So that's the women's 200 meters. Let's keep it on the sprint side and keep it on the women's side. Let's talk about that women's 400 meters. Now, <laughs> this was kind of a surprise, but not too much of a worry for me. Um, I think everyone going into this looked at Shawna Miller-Webo as the clear favorite to get this win. Um, she's already run 49.91. She has the second best time in the world this year. But she actually finished third place in this race. Now, why'd she finish third? I think she has a, there's a couple of reasons. Well, even before that, let's give some, some just do. Um, Paulino, silver medalist in Tokyo last year. She managed to get the win here, 51.20, just ahead of Stephanie Ann McPherson, who ran 51.69, and Miller Weibo ran 51.84. Times are irrelevant. It was super windy. Um, we saw, I think, in the jumps, there was up, winds up to 7.3 meters per second. Times are absolutely irrelevant, right? 51 means nothing. But Paulino is really showing some great consistency. Not only did she get silver last year, but she also managed to be pretty consistent in the Diamond League and on the circuit after the Tokyo Olympics. So she's showing that she's jumping right back into it. Stephanie McPherson, she's kind of the veteran of the 400 meters at this point. I think it was, uh, it was either 2011 or 2013. She got a bronze medal in the, two, in the 400 meters after there was um, a DQ. Um, but she is one of the veterans, and she's showing that she's trying to not go anywhere, right? She's really being consistent, got fourth place at Tokyo last year. She wants, probably wants a little bit of revenge there. But Miller Weibo, now I still think Miller Weibo is the clear favorite for the 400 meter gold at the world championships this year. In the press conference right before, um, the day before, she was saying that her and her coach are trying out a couple different race models to uh, eventually get her that gold medal and to get her that, um, to get her that personal best to go under 48 seconds in the 400 meters. I think what they probably did was she probably came out here, was trying out a race model and didn't expect the weather and the wind to be as it was. And things just didn't go to plan, right? She didn't look like she was hurting. She didn't look like she was in pain or anything like that. She looked like she was like, okay, yeah, I got it, right? I think Miller Weibo is a clear favorite and for the 400 meters, this is just a, you know, a step in that direction. We'll see what happens at the world championships, but no one is, she ran 48.36 seconds to win her uh, second gold medal in the Olympics with no one around, right? She was walking away from the field. She didn't have Sawaii Nasser to pull her. Nasser is not going to be here um, this year as she's still banned until January. So definitely, I think Miller Weibo is a favorite, but keep a lookout for Paulino. Also, McPherson, of course, is strong. Keep a lookout for McLeod, Candice McLeod from Jamaica. She is definitely going to be one to look out for as well. She um, finished very well last year in Tokyo, so keep a lookout for her. Now, Still on the track, I definitely want to talk about some of the field events, but let's jump over to that men's 400 meter hurdles. Now, we are only missing Carson Warholm. I don't know where Carson Warholm is right now. He I, he should be running. I hope he jumps into a race. He's not going to be at Prefontaine. Um, but regardless, we had pretty much the entire top field for the men's 400 meters um, here today in Doha. We had Rye Benjamin, Allison DeSantos, um, Kyron McMaster, Yasmini Capello, right? All the guys who were in the final in Tokyo last year, they are here. And this was kind of an upset, but not too much of an upset. Rye Benjamin, probably the favorite going into this race because of obviously what he's done, 46.17. 
but Dos Santos managed to run him down after um, over the last two hurdles. Dos Santos got the win, 47.24 seconds in the 400 meter hurdles. Benjamin just behind at 47.49. This bodes very well for both of them. They're opening up their seasons, sub 47.5, right? Um, it's showing that they're going to be hitting 46 later on in the season, right? They're going to be at 46. It's just a matter of how far down in the 46 is. Maybe 45s again. I don't know if we'll see that, but this is going to be, um, you know, really fast season. Alessandro Santos is the youngest of all the guys, and I think he's going to improve his personal best um, that he ran last year at the Olympics, right? 46.72. Keep a lookout for DeSantos. Also, please keep a lookout for Kyron McMaster. Now, we only finished fourth here behind Thomas Barr, but he is also just as young as all these guys, and he has a personal best of 47.08, which he ran to finish fourth. I don't know if he's going to be able to break the top three of Benjamin Dos Santos and Warholm, but McMaster is definitely a threat. Please keep a lookout for him, all right? So that's the 400 meter hurdles. Also a note, Samba unfortunately didn't start. It really sucks because Samba is, he's run 46.98, right? One of the few athletes to go under 47 seconds, but he's been dealing with some injuries ever since 2019. So we'll see if he's able, ever able to get back, but um, definitely keep a lookout for the other guys in these hurdles. So talking about the track, right, we got the 200s, we got the 400s, also got to note that women's um, women's 100 meter hurdles. Now, this wasn't too much of a fast race. We did see in Puerto Rico, Jasmine Camacho Quinn finished second place, um, you know, in Puerto Rico and her, you know, home country or whatever. But um, here we had, you know, kind of high quality field. We had Kenny Harrison, right? We had... Um, Brittany Anderson, we had Megan Tapper, Toby Amusan. Um, Kenny Harrison got the edge, 12.43 seconds, just ahead of Anderson and Amusan. First, Anderson was given the win, but then it's kind of flipping around. Harrison got the got the win that was pretty clear if you looked at the at the photo. But I think this bodes well in terms of the second kind of rung of athletes, right? I think Jasmine Camacho Quinn, despite her finishing second um, yesterday, right? She did she you know didn't hear the gun, got a, a slow start or whatever it may be. She's still the favorite, in my opinion. She's still the clear favorite. She is a league ahead of everyone else. Then you have a whole tier of athletes who are just below them. You have a bunch of college athletes. Then you have Kendra Harrison, Tobia Musan, who's probably one of the one of the most dangerous athletes. She's been finishing fourth a couple years back to back. Of course, Brittany Anderson, Gabby Cunningham, Megan Tapper. There's a couple athletes behind. I think one athlete that we're kind of missing who's not in this race, hasn't raced recently, only a couple weeks ago, Nia Ali, the reigning world champion, gave birth just last year. So, of course, took the year off, but now coming back from birth, she's already run extremely fast this year. Keep a lookout for Nia Ali. But Kendra Harrison, I would love to see Harrison get back to that form that got her to the world record, but it's looking like, I don't know, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. But I think Harrison is definitely one to uh, potentially be a medal threat again, um, just like she got in 2019 as well as 2021. So keep a lookout for all these athletes in the women's uh, 100 meter hurdles. Now let's jump over to the field events. And like I said, these field events got, they were, they were kind of pummeled. First off, that um, first off, let's start with the men's high jump. So the men's high jump, this was really billed as kind of a rematch um, between um, Barshim and Tambiri, you know, where they shared their gold last year um, at the Olympics. Tambiri, he struggled a little bit. He was doing well, but then you know he only cleared you know two heights throughout the entire night. So you know two sixteen and two twenty, he eventually finished seventh place. So unfortunately, not too too well there, but he'll probably be back. I, I don't have too many worries about uh, Tambiri. But then at the top, Barshim, of course, in Doha, his home country of Qatar, he was kind of the favorite here, but he managed to jump. Um, he managed to jump pretty well, 2.30 meters, um, but he finished second place to um, Sangyak Wu from South Korea. Now, Wu is very young, and he's been making some progress. Wu managed to jump 2.33 meters in that high jump, just off his personal best of 2.35 meters. He did take some attempts at 2.35 and then also 2.37. Unfortunately, didn't make either of them. But I think Wu is going to be giving people a lot of trouble when they get to Eugene later on this year. Barshim is in, of course, the second half of his career. Realize Barshim got, well, he finished bronze originally in 2012, but upgraded to silver. He's been competing and won medals in three Olympic cycles, 2012, 2016, and then 2020. And then some world championships in between that. He's had a long, long career. I think he's 
Um, he's definitely going to be a metal threat again. He's definitely going to be a gold metal threat again. But Wu is definitely one to look out for. Keep a lookout for him. Also have to know Javon Harrison. Um, he only managed to jump 2.20 meters here, but he's, you know, he's still young. He's still growing. So keep a lookout for what he's able to do. Now, let's finish off with the women's triple jump. And this one was triple jump was actually one of my favorite events um, at the Doha Diamond League just to look out for because we all know Yulimar Rojas is gone, right? She is gone. She's already, she jumped, she jumps 15 meters on command, like nothing, right? But everyone under her is kind of, you know, going back and forth. We're not exactly sure who's going to get the lesser medals and things like that. So I'm really intrigued by the women's triple jump this year um, with Rojas and with everyone else. Now, I kind of mentioned it before. In this women's triple jump, Kimberly Williams, in round one, she managed to jump 13.60 meters. So nothing far, nothing like that. But she had a wind behind her of plus 7.3. So we're talking about a huge wind behind her. No one was going to be jumping far with that, right? Or no one was going to be jumping very well with all that wind. But we did see some good marks. Uh, Shanika Ricketts, she managed to get the, um, get the win here in 14.82 meters. So that's actually a pretty good jump, but... Again, wind aided, 6.5 meters per second wind behind her. Um, and then behind her was um, Marina Bekromanchuk from Ukraine. She managed to jump 14.73 meters, also 6.3 meters per second wind right behind her. Now, this, I think, is kind of starting to solidify a couple ladies who are really in that top rung of the second rung behind Yulimar Rojas. Ricketts, she got fourth place at the Olympics last year. She also got the... Um, the bronze medal in 2019 at the world championships, but she's been pretty consistent and she has a personal best 14.98 meters. So she's just on the cusp of breaking that 15 meter barrier. Beth Manchuk though is one to look out for. She's originally a long jumper moved to the triple jump. I think she just started doing the triple jump this indoor season. She managed to get a medal at the world indoor championships earlier this year in uh, Serbia. So in the triple jump, she managed to get a medal. For her to be able to jump 14.73 meters, if you if you look, her personal best outdoors is 13.07 meters, right? She hasn't even jumped outdoors well enough to be even in consideration. But what she's done indoors, this performance here, despite the wind, Romanchuk is definitely in metal contention. I look at some of the other names though, right? Thea Lafon, she's jumped very, very well, 14.60 meters. She finished third here. Uh, Patricia Mamona from Portugal, she got the silver medal in Tokyo last year. She's only jumped 14.40 uh, meters. Um, you know, here she finished sixth place. She's also on the, you know, kind of in the second half of her career. She's in her 30s right now, but there's a lot of athletes who are in the mix. Um, you know, Katora Orji from the United States. There's tons of athletes who are in the mix, but we have to see who's really going to flesh themselves out. I think. Ricketts, Becker Manchuk, these are two athletes we are definitely looking to potentially solidify themselves right behind Yulimar Rojas, but a lot more to come as the season progresses, all right? So that's just a quick recap of the Doha Diamond League, just doing this kind of uh, podcast style, just talking through it. Uh, definitely going to be going through a couple more recaps as well as we go throughout the season. So keep tuning in. Make sure you, um, make sure you share the video. Let me know what your favorite events were from the Doha Diamond League. Was it the 200? Was that 400 meter hurdles? Let us know and we'll definitely be back for more next time. Thanks.